laying out the tapers here and I've got a bit of a quandary I guess because three of these have to be uh, basically full length I'm not going to change that uh, and the rest are going to be about uh, I want to say maybe three quarters of an inch shorter so I'm going to lay out the tape around the long piece here and the so I'm coming in one two three eighths these are a little bit wider than three eighths but I'm going to go with the three eighths measurement right there and then I'm just going to connect the dots from that point down to the end and as long as I cut them consistently I'll figure out how to do that so that's my taper and as long as like I say as long as even if this is three quarters of an inch shorter uh, it's just going to simplify things down the road when I go to match these these uh, pieces here on the end match that taper okay my jig for cutting these tapers I haven't even used it yet as you can see I gotta trim this off I line this up you know much like you would any taper jig with my cut line matching the edge and my uh, my point just off the edge there I guess but like I said as long as I'm consistent I'll be fine so these are two pieces that I had extra that are you can see they're the same they're the same pieces I was using to make my uprights so I I put one on you know kind of friction glued it uh, while I had this next to it holding this tight and then holding that edge put another piece on at a right angle for a stop I don't know if well yeah I need it to uh, register my piece and then I just made uh, well here and then this is nothing more than a bolt you know a quarter inch bolt sunk through there and uh, this uh, larger diameter holes just uh, a bit uh, smaller than the points of the of the bolt so it won't spin on me and then uh, just uh, made a little step clamp here again same material cut it to length this is eighth inch this is about three eighths, so it's it stands. You know, hope I can show you that. It stands up a little proud of of the surface there, both surfaces, so it doesn't contact this, and it'll give me that uh, that tightening effect that I want. So if I put my piece on there, throw this on. The one thing I have to be careful of what I'm doing whoop, is that <clears throat> this thing doesn't spin on me I need to keep this at a right angle as well which shouldn't be too hard but the knob the knob is clear of my cut line and now you can see if you look down the the gun barrel there the clearance I have Clean that up with one pass of the block plane. 
and I only have to do it uh, 31 more times. <laughs> so one thing you saw in that first uh, uh, cut I made, this little wedge wanted to fall in between my blade and the uh, uh, insert. So I, I've changed that out, put a zero clearance insert in here. So I won't have that problem. So let's see how the next uh, next three go for this for this set here. Consistent. And that's what you're looking for. Just got to go in a little farther. There. Beautiful, nice. They all have nice, the same nice reveal on the on the outside here. So I'm going to do. Uh, I'll do them all, and then the other ones I can trim down to size after I get the tapers cut. Okay, I need to transfer this angle to my pieces of maple. So what I did was I picked one of the pieces that had a an upright that was in there fairly snug. I flushed it up to the bottom just by pushing down on it and it just came up ever so slightly. And so now I'm just going to take my my uh, gauge here and rotate it. There we go. And now I'll just lock that in position here. That looks pretty good to me. For those of you interested, it's looks like it's about so after taking off my safety glasses and putting my reading glasses on, I can see that that gauge read just about 6 degrees. So that's what I've set my miter gauge for. But now I'm just marking the knees so that I make sure that I cut them at the proper uh, I guess the proper orientation. And I've got a, a backer board that's clamped to my miter gauge set to six degrees. And um, I made this cut and I also changed blades. This is an 80 tooth cross cut blade. And so I, I made this cut to, to uh, get my exact cut line. And I've got this registered just the corners just off the edge here. So I'm going to hold it by with my hand, run it through, I'm, and I'm going to take and cut this uh, without a uh, sacrificial block in between there on this first one, and just to see what happens. That if it cuts clean, then that will really speed up the process. I guess the main thing is, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I think we'll be fine. Let's try it here.
is perfect. That surface is glass smooth. Uh, I got a didn't number these. I should have. Let's see which one goes in here. There it is. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's nice. That taper. Yeah, that looks good. Just eyeballing it here. I think it could be just a bit shallower. I mean, it is very, very close. I'm just open on the top here, just barely. So I'm going to leave, uh, well, obviously I'm not going to change that one, but I'm going to adjust that taper. Yeah, it's got to go shallower. So about a half a degree maybe. But you can hardly notice it on this. I mean, if I cut them all this way, they'd all be consistent and it would be fine. But I'm going to change that just a little bit and then and then run the rest. Actually, I'll, I'll show you this next one after I get it changed here. So I'm going to go uh, I'm going to go to 5 and just under. It's probably about 5 and 3 quarter degree. Okay, and I'll cut the other side. So that's the other thing I was going to tell you, as long as I'm jabbering here. I'm going to cut these all uh, single sides first. And then um, when I flip them, I'll reset my stop. And this this side of the stop is cut to this taper, so that that'll match up uh, identical. Yeah, that would be wrong. This one's got to go this way. All right, let's cut this one and see what happens here. it right there. I nailed it. Perfect. All right. Beautiful. I'll finish them up. Yeah, a glass smooth finish from that blade. All right, I turn my setup around here. I've got my tapered edge flush against the, the cut edge, and I've elevated it by the thickness of a credit card just so that uh, I don't get any debris in here. So that looks good to me. I'm just off the edge here like I was before. And I'm going to make this cut.
it's beautiful. I got a nice cream, you know, clean, crisp shoulder there. And uh, I, because I did do a test cut on a, on a, another piece, and when I did cut it, I ended up with just a little facet right there uh, because it was too short. So I had to move my setup over just a bit. I was hoping I wouldn't have to do that. I I used this. I used the square cut edge, but as it turns out, I had to move it, and uh, the results are are very nice. I just realized that there is only one way to cut these tapers, and there your pieces have to be correctly oriented. And luckily for me, mine were all oriented in the right direction. But let me show you what I mean here. This way. You can see that this has got more meat removed than the other one. Had I had them flipped over and cut the taper the opposite way, when I went to put my cove in, I would have cut this out. So you have to, if you're going to put the, the, the uh, cove cut on the bottom of these, you have to make sure that the uh, small edge is up and it's, the taper is going the correct way. So, uh, like I said, lucky for me, I had all mine oriented the right way, but I really didn't realize it until I was about three-fourths of the way done. So, uh, as I was going through my process, I... I made sure I kept everything in the in the proper uh, direction and proper orientation. So, just a word to the wise there.